Welcome to today's video. Today's video is a review on LV by EV Box. In this series of videos, I'll be reviewing an extensive range of electric vehicle chargers on the market today. If you're interested in buying an electric car, then buying an electric car charger is one of, going to be one of your first major purchases for that car. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to be notified every time one of these new videos comes out on a charger, so don't forget to click that notification bell. Now, if you're watching this video and you're an installer, great. There's some stuff in here that will be really helpful for installers that I will be specifically including for installers, but mainly that these videos are for you, the end user, to understand if this is the right chargers to stick for for the next five years of your life plus. Because that's the thing with these chargers, we might change our car after two, three years of leasing them, but the chargers will still be working and still be there. And you need to make a conscious decision if you want it to be on the side of your house it may be pretty it may be ugly but we need to make a conscious decision from day one if it's worth having and if you want to help find a local installer near you to install one of these boxes then check out my link at rightcharge.co.uk forward slash evnick now before we get to unboxing the unit and showing what's in the box let's explain some key features that it has it comes in two colors it comes in polar white and misty black it comes in tethered and an untethered version which i've got here and the units here, as I'll explain in a minute, are interchangeable. So you can buy one unit today that's tethered and change it to an untethered unit in the future. It, they are very, very durable units, very well built. They come with the standard three year warranty that all OLEV fitted units come, but there isn't an additional option to upgrade the warranty to a five year warranty. Now the first impressions I get with this box is it's very heavy. Now that will be explained shortly why that actually matters. The next thing you'll notice is the box is what I like to call retail packaging rather than commercial packaging because usually these boxes are only ever seen by engineers but they've taken a lot of time and care to make a, a very attractive packaging. There's a drill template on the back of this what we call sleeve. It's got very unique build quality features compared to other manufacturing packaging which we'll show you as we open it up. Firstly what we've we got inside here we've obviously got the instruction book here which is the insulation manual for the engineers very very important that engineers install these properly so let's put that to the side nice and safely we've also got how to connect the app up because there's an app for all these smart chargers so there's the information for downloading the app another guide for the in installer here on how to install certain parts inside which we'll go into later and then a user manual, which is quite nice, which I presume most users will never ever see. Most users, uh, some people will want to read these, so it's important to have. However, I'm not like most people, so that'll be going over there. <laughs> We've next here got what we call two keys. These are for opening the charge point, uh, open and close. So it's basically a toolless design, so you use these special tools to open and close it. And then in here, when we open here, we have two things. We've got a, an RFID card, which you can use to program sort of one for say work, or you've got another one here you could use for programming for home use. So you've got the benefit of having two different charge RFID cards to start, start the charger, or just even for security. So you didn't want anyone else to use it. If you're worried about someone nicking your electric, then you could use one of these RFID cards for that. And now we get into the big thing, this is the charger. So let's just, for the time being, just move these charge pieces out of the way and we'll uh, go into what else is left in the box first before we actually look at properly at the charger. So in these little guzzings here, you've got the screws and bolts to bolt it to the wall. Nice big long uh, screws here and, and bolts. We've also got a selection of all the little tools what an, uh, the electrician might need to open up the box just in case he hasn't got the right torque screws. But all the torque screw bits are there as well. We've got the grommets for feeding various bits of connection like electrical connections through or the other bits and bobs. Now when I unscrewed this unit, these two parts were separated, but if they weren't separated, that's where these two keys come in, where you take them in and you slide it down the sides and that will open up the charge point if they were locked together when you got it. But the charge point is separated into two parts, so let's explain what this bit here, here is. This bit is the front part of the charger, this is your type two plug. You can have a tethered cord on here as well, but basically the front is all the smart part of the gubbins. It's got all the computer hardware, 
all the bits and bobs that uh, make it a smart charger and also gives you the option of buying an untethered charger or a tethered charger and then actually changing this front cover to another charger and they're quite it's quite a neat looking device uh, i mean you could also change it for a different color if you didn't like the color that you, it came in but basically it's got these very large connection blocks at the back that plug directly if we take this little cover off directly into these so this is just a safety water cover but plugs directly into that so you can change this for different fronts different bits and bobs if they, if, if they if you wanted a different socket in the future and i think that's a very neat idea again this is very heavy we don't know what's inside it uh, but it's got most of the electronics now this one is one of the few chargers that does still require an airfrod so that's worth bearing in mind depending on what type of install you have uh, some installs don't need airfrods at all but the majority of uk households still need airfrods let's move on to what this back plate is now what i quite like about this back plate system is you can install this pretty easily if you're an installer so first of all you'd use the cardboard cut out which was on the sleeve so for drilling your holes and then you'd mount this to your wall mount this to the wall unscrew unscrew these panels here and then you've got basically what we call they're a type of wago block in inside here wago terminals so the electric connection you'd ferrule it put ferrules on the end and you put insert the ferrules into into your charger here now the advantage of that is the normal screw type terminals require maintenance you're supposed to tighten them you can over tighten them you can under tighten them and it causes all sorts of problems warranty issues and they basically invested paying more money for these special terminals here so you can see basically so that the, the, the maintenance free lasts longer they they'll have less warranty repairs but it does mean that the unit is more expensive than say other units because they've spent the time and money in putting quality products in in fact let's open it up let's see what's inside now we're inside it you can see a lot better so here what we have is a siemens meter this is again not a piece of kit that's cheap this is obviously bought in now this siemens piece of kit here is actually available to do dynamic load balancing straight off what this is so this is able to talk to other versions of this and do dynamic load balancing and there's basically switches and wago terminals for connecting into that dynamic load terminal you'll also notice there is live one live two and live three and that is because this unit straight out of the box is capable of doing free phase so most of our european friends are on free phase and this unit is sold all over europe so instead of just making a 22 kilowatt version a 7 kilowatt version they allow you to do on this version all the way from i think 3.6 kilowatts all the way up to 22 kilowatts straight out of the box you can do 11 kilowatts you can do low balancing using the siemens siemens box here and using these various terminals here but again like i said there is obviously a need for an earth in here which means that you do actually need a proper earth it's not able to do a pen fault detection on this unit because our european friends don't have the same electric regs as us and this again like i said is a european unit but you can see from all these terminals all these blocks all these wiring that they used it is an extremely well built high quality unit <laughs> Now once the unit has been physically installed, your installer will use the EV Box Connect installer app to finish this setup process. And in that, as an installer, what you can do is you can change the minimum current amps and the maximum current amps if you've been restricted by the DNO on what the maximum amperage you can go to on this unit. So you can set that directly in the unit that the user should not or cannot change unless they mess around with this app. This app will use the Bluetooth on your phone to talk to the units. You need to be next to the unit when setting this up. The security code is in this pack, which does need to be given to the user. Most importantly, because it has the keys for disassembling the front part of the unit, if they ever need to take it off for any reason in the future, it has their security code that they're gonna use for their consumer app, their customer side app. So they do need it. Now the Wi-Fi can be changed on only the installer app and they don't need to go into the installer settings to do that they should never as a customer go in the installer settings. so I'm talking to you the people who want to play around with it 
don't mess around with the installer side apps you can damage the unit and you can turn off a lot of safety protection systems that are built into this machine like DC leakage protection. Now, there's a couple of other things the engineer can set up or even you can set in the engineer settings if you want to change them and that is programming these RFID cards directly into the machine for automatic starts and various other settings in there. You'll really have to play around with it, but basically you can set these cards up to be in the app so if you just tap this card once on the front of the machine it will automatically start the charge now the customer side of the app is called ev box charge that's the one that you'll need as a customer to set up all the various settings and if we have a look at the app you need to first set up your rfid cards the code for your rfid cards are in the back you'll also need to register this charger and an account with them now the way this system is designed is it can work with other management platforms but EVbox have their own management platform and that's what we'll be looking at today but if you run a multiple site you're a commercial site you can run this charger on multiple different commercial levels in different charging platforms if you run a pay to charge service so there is a whole host of things that this unit can do now you'll notice that the EV charge app looks like a general public charging app and that is because it does double up as that so when you register your RFID cards that you can tap on the front of your unit to start it. This card can be programmed to use other apps that are on the EV Charge platform or partner sites. So you may notice that there's some charges near you that this RFID card now will start. And if you link a credit card to your account, if it's a pay charger, they'll start and build your centralized EV Charge account. So that's quite a useful little thing to know, quite helpful and it really does mean that these cards can double up not only as a security tool for your house but also as a centralized billing system for yourself. Now from a home user's point of view I do find the app a little bit clunky. It's very very slow loading menus and I think that's because it's a internet web page based app so it's loading up and requesting sites on the web page rather than being intuitively pre-listed on the app and preloading on a server somewhere. It's very, very slow in my mind. It can get a little bit frustrating, but to be fair, most of the stuff you're going to be going in the app for will not be every day. It'll just be occasionally checking what your kilowatt usage is. Now, this has a very accurate inside electricity meter. So if you wanted to have two separate RFID cards program, one for work and one for personal use, or one for your wife or one for your kids, or even if you're in a shared flat or shared accommodation and you're sharing the charge multiple people you can have multiple accounts multiple RFID cards all linked to the central management account and that's where this central management account really comes in it's it's really really good for managing multiple users on an account if you're wishing to bill or charge them for their exact electricity usage and, and there is some smart functions like timing so you can set different timing functions on this now annoyingly it doesn't work on the app you're going to have to go to their web page to set the charging profiles and you can make different charging profiles and then you can assign them in the app but to actually create them has to be done on their web page which I find a little bit annoying but it's a software thing so I can imagine that when they see this review they will fix that and put it on the app. Now one thing I do find really clever what you can do on their charge delay app which I've not seen before in other charge points is you can set the maximum ampage for a given time period. Now this would come in useful if you didn't pay for their solar diversion option because they do a solar a solar option where you can put a CT clamp on your solar. If you didn't pay for that um, because you didn't want to spend the money or various other reasons, you could set the times between when you know it's sunny and you're producing solar and what your solar system does and you can set a max amperage for those hours so it will only draw off the solar and not from the grid. So you can mess around with the amperage there the other things that you could possibly do with the ampage is have it slow charge overnight and then just before you wake up in the morning have it charge faster to heat the battery up so you've got a warm battery ready for driving to get maximum efficiency. There's various things you can do on it. The main thing that you'll notice is that the maximum amperage allowed, it says 500 amps. Remember that the installer would have set your unit at 32 amps. The reason it's 500 is again these units are have a very commercial base setting they are meant to talk to several LV units. So if you have more than one of these, you could have up to 500 amps on this one management platform. They'd all talk to each other. You'd set the max amperage and the, the whole units would dynamically load balance across each other. So if you had two units, it'd be 32 times two. 
and if that said the grid connection there was only 50 amps you could have it set as a maximum 50 amps and it would always come down on the grid load on dynamic balancing so it's a really clever management system for commercial sites in summary this unit is probably one of my favorite build quality units the actual way it's been put together the engineering side it feels like one of the most solid units i've had my hands on it feels a very heavy very well put together unit it could possibly be the most future proof unit on the market today with it available to do three phase straight out of the box meaning that if you decide to go three phase in the future it can grow with you with the interchangeable face plates at the front it does mean that if you buy it and untethered now you can change and if they for some reason ever did change type 2 plugs which I it won't happen but if they ever did you could change the front of this face plate for a new face plate for whatever charge plug they've differently gone to the other thing is because of the dynamic load balancing and the way these units work there is nothing stopping them changing this face plate to having two plugs on so if you bought one of these went free phase and they made a front place plate that did two cars you could charge two cars off this they don't currently make one that does that but there's nothing stopping them there is the ability to go have some solar diversion on it but i haven't got the solar diversion ct clamps to test it because they haven't sent them but there is that ability built into this unit as well the only thing that's really let it down for me is the app uh, is a little bit clunky but it's something i do expect them they will fix because software is easy to fix the hardware part they've already got right so I do think it's a bit clunky if you're a commercial site I think that this will be definitely be one of the one of your favorite units for a multiple site it has all the management tools you can change it to work with your own back-end billing system and I think if you're a flat or you've shared usage and you want to charge people for using this as a public charger all those management tools are built in their back-end system of this so it does really really make it a very very attractive and unique charge point in the market if you're thinking of buying one of these then go to rightcharge.co.uk forward slash ev nick and they'll help you find a local store for your business or home i hope you've enjoyed this video this review of this charger there is more charger reviews to come and a lot more that are being filmed as we speak if you've enjoyed this video give it a like give it a subscribe and i'll see you again next week goodbye